You're listening to the Big and Tall Sports Show with your host Pete Apostolopoulos and Alex Reed. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the third ever Big and Tall Sports Podcast exclusive interview. Joined by Vermont men's basketball star Trey Bell Haynes, coming from Toronto, Ontario. Trey, how are you today? I'm good. I can't complain. How are you guys doing? Fantastic, buddy. Uh, first of all, congratulations, uh, American East Player of the Year. Uh, how does that one feel after being there for four years? Uh, it felt good. I was, I was surprised, honestly. Um, I mean, there's a ton of good players in the conference, and... Um, I didn't didn't think I was going to get it, but it felt really good. I'm honored, of course. So, a little bit of backstory. Trey and I went to high school together at Bill Crothers Secondary School. And before we talk about you guys absolutely dominating this year, I want to take you back a few years ago. So, you're in your senior year now, correct? Or did you redshirt? Yep. Uh, no, I'm a junior. I'm a junior. You're a junior? Okay. So, yeah. Trey and I are the same age, and we were sat next to each other in grade 12 English. Shout out. Um, but uh, f- before we talk about, you know, the team this year and whatnot, go back, take us back to what it was like being a Canadian guy coming in, especially in a sport like basketball where there's, you know, hundreds of prep schools down there. They take it obviously really seriously and, you know, maybe speak about a, a bit about the program that they developed at Bill Crothers and how that really helped you kind of get down there and get on the map. Um. Yeah, I mean... That without Crothers, I'm definitely not. I'm not where I am today. Um, um just um, the coach Charles. Um, he's a he's a teacher at Crothers. He teaches the um, special special needs class, and um, he was uh, one of my coaches at AAU, which is just kind of a traveling team. And he um, he told me and a couple of my good friends that he was just kind of trying to develop a program. He made no promises, just kind of a team that high school team that could travel down to the states and kind of play the top top prep programs um, kind of south of the border and he he wanted to start with me and a couple of my a couple of my good friends and um it kind of came to fruition we went there and i mean we played some really good really good teams we played a lot of nba players um and i mean without without bill Carlos, i'm definitely not at vermont um so i credit i credit a lot of that to him and the school and starting that program was vermont your first choice when you were looking at schools um, well, I was being, I was being recruited by like a lot, a uh, good amount of schools. Um, I was being recruited by Creighton for a long time and their, their big East, which is a high major school. So I definitely want, I want to go there. Um, I was being recruited by a couple of Ivy League schools as well. Harvard, Columbia, Brown. So, I mean, you can't really, can't really look those down, but Vermont was my first, my first official scholarship offer. Um, um, when I was, I think I got it late. I got it late um, in the spring signing period, so I kind of jumped on it because I didn't want to have to wait for any for any other programs and have this kind of this opportunity to kind of go to waste, um, especially because how how good the program was. So, a couple of highlights by our friend Trey. You were American East All Rookie Team. You were All Conference Third Team in 2016, and you were All Conference All Tournament Team in 2016 last year and then obviously this year you're a player of the year so what are kind of some of the things that you personally have worked on obviously the team has gotten better as you've been there and now you guys are in a great position to make the tournament but what are some of the things that you personally set goals for and now that you're seeing them come to fruition um i mean for me the biggest the biggest part of my game that needed work was my shot and coming into college and i think I spent spent tons of time working on my game overall, but definitely spent the most time just trying to get that get that better and improve that every day. So just working on my shot, but just playing in year by year, you get gaining experience. You're playing in the same system, so you're learning how to how to score in your system and learning when to make plays and how to make plays. So I just credit kind of all of that to the success and getting getting better. So obviously having a ton of success at Vermont this year, now with 20 wins in a row, which stands alone as the longest streak in the entire uh, Division One basketball. How was this kind of a game by game, or was it? Is this just you know we go out there and we ball out, or is this in the back of your mind as you as you go along? 
Uh, I mean, it, it started when we started. It's kind of we were coming off a couple a couple losses, and we kind of just wanted to string a couple win a couple wins together in December and early January, just kind of get some momentum going. Um, but the longer the longer the streak went, we didn't we didn't really look at the streak. We kind of just kind of took it game by game, and we started getting new looks. Teams were just trying to do what they do their best to beat us. So we kind of just like focus on the next team, focus on the next practice, and we'll take it one day at a time, one game at a time. Um, obviously, being in the upper Northeast, there's probably you know basketball is probably not a big drawing point for a lot of the schools that are in your conference. I know your ho- your conference is predominantly a hockey conference, correct? Correct. Yeah, yeah, it is. So, being this kind of smaller school from the upper Northeast, pulling off all these wins, has it been a little nerve wracking? Because like you guys are playing games on ESPN now, like. You know, you guys are starting to get some love. You know, you're you're hopefully going to be in the tournament um, if you guys pull up, pull off another win next weekend in the conference championships. Um, what's it kind of been like this year as you guys have progressed on this big run? I mean, as the as the winning streak's gone longer, kind of the the fan support and the national recognition has kind of grown. Um, going into this week, we got we got a couple votes in the top twenty five poll. Which is uh, the first time in a while that Vermont's gotten any votes. So, just kind of on the national scene, just being recognized, um, uh, like you said, on ESPN, having games televised. But um, pertaining to here and just being in Burlington and stuff. I mean, we've sold out. I think our last five games, and before that, I've never, I've never played in front of a solo crowd here. So, I mean, people are starting to notice, and I mean. When you're doing well, and you guys know, when the Leafs or when the Raptors are doing well, the whole city, the whole city knows that, and uh, it's kind of the same thing here. When we're doing well, the kind of the whole city's behind us. Can you just kind of talk about that and how um, how much different maybe it is from Canada to the U.S.? I know you you maybe not know it at the collegiate level here in Canada, but we don't exactly sell out games here. Uh, maybe the Ryerson men's team does. But can you kind of talk about what the atmosphere atmosphere is like um, for Vermont in particular uh, surrounding college basketball? I mean, uh, to everyone's excited. Um, right now, we got people coming coming around visiting practice and stuff, just congratulating us, and it's, um, it's something I haven't really experienced before. Um, not in my first two years, and just um, a lot more excitement. Um, our university president came and vis- came to our locker room a couple of days ago, and they're they're very congratulatory towards the team and it's just when you go out and you see people you know or you people you don't know that are congratulating you and going to like grocery shopping and stuff like that and people wishing you good luck so it kind of just it never stops them everywhere you go someone's wishing you good luck or congratulating you on a good game so just everybody in the city's noticing and it's a, it's a pretty small town so uh, not a lot not a lot goes unnoticed so it, it's nice do you notice any sort of, uh, I won't call it backlash, but any sort of um, difference of opinion uh, based off the fact that you're Canadian or is just you're just a basketball player who's playing at Vermont? I'm um, just a basketball player. Um, I mean, like um, like Pete said, it, it being a hockey school, there's, there's tons of Canadian athletes here. Um, a lot of hockey players, a lot of skiers as well. Um, so I kind of it was kind of a nice spot because I could fit in. There's a lot of people that I could kind of lean on for support. Um, but no, just when when we're playing well, um, when we're when we're winning games, it's you're part of Vermont men's basketball, and that's that's all. That's all. Uh, not nothing American or Canadian, nothing like that. So last year you guys were 23 and 14, and you lost in the conference championship game in the American East final, correct? Yep. So this year going into the game. Is there a little bit of, I don't want to say added incentive, because obviously you guys have a lot going on right now in terms of the winning streak and hopefully getting into the tournament, but is that kind of going to be in the back of your mind on Saturday that, hey, like we lost in this game last year and you know you guys kind of have that feeling of defeat now going into it? Do you think that that's an advantage for you guys? Yeah, um, just being playing in it last year, um, I think the experience of being in a game at that big of a stage is definitely is going to help us out a lot. Um, but just the, the way we lost last year, we um, 
we were up double digits with, I think, 10 to go, and we kind of blew a lead late, and they, they came back and beat us. And um, So we've we've kind of had that in the back of our minds all season and trying to trying to build off that and learn on that so that it doesn't happen again. And so far it seems to... Uh, it seemed to work, so hopefully we got we got one more game to, before March Madness, and we win that, and hopefully we don't repeat what happened last year. Is there kind of a thought of, you know, we win this game and and we're for sure in? Or are you, because uh, I, I I don't want to say there's an atmosphere of you guys thinking that you're almost a lock for the tournament with an at-large bid, but is this kind of going in an all or nothing to get into the tournament type of game, or what's the atmosphere around that? Yeah, no, it's um, it's definitely. Definitely all or nothing. Um, we know we're in a smaller conference, so we're not we're not being looked at for an at large. We're one big conference, and the conference champion is the team that gets in. So we know what what's at stake in the game, and we're not going to put any any more pressure on ourselves. We're kind of just going to go out there and play our game. Let's kind of pay dividends throughout the whole year. So hopefully on Saturday uh, that works out, and Saturday afternoon we'll know that we're dancing. So. We've talked a lot about your 20 game streak. But from a basketball perspective, like how have you guys done this? How have you guys gone on this incredible run of of winning all these games in a row? Like what what part of the game have you guys really been doing well enough to keep this up? Um I think it's it's the little things that are the little things that are the biggest part of the winning streak. I mean, no details too small. Um it sounds cliché, but that's kind of how we've we've looked at it, um, just the the little mistakes. We, we can win a game by twenty or thirty, but the coach coach will only be pointing out the mistakes we made in that game, so that the next time, the next game we play, we kind of get better um, on that. In terms of the scheme and like how we've been playing, we've just we've been really solid defensively, and teams of teams are having a really tough time scoring on us. And I think as long as we keep the defense up to the level it's been at, um, teams are going to continue to have a hard time scoring and we'll find ways to win. So if you guys, you know, let's play a little bit of devil's advocate, Alec. <laughs> All right. If you guys do get into the tournament, why should people be talking about Vermont being able to make a run and knock off some of these bigger schools that might not give you guys the respect you deserve? Um, I mean, this is a- Number numbers wise, I mean we're we're really good. I think we're a top twenty defense in the country and we're a top thirty offense. So the numbers the numbers don't really lie. Um but I mean we're going into any any tournament game we get with no pressure. I mean we're a small small school team, hasn't been to the tournament in the five or six years and we're gonna play a big probably bigger high major team that that expects to beat us. So we're kind of going there with nothing to lose. and It's going to be a lot different than the whole season because we've been playing with this, this win streak and people expecting us to win. So it's going to, it's going to be a change being the underdog, which would probably be, probably be good for us. Coming into the tournament, um, there's a kind of a, an emphasis on high major schools and, you know, four years ago or three years ago, I guess when you decided to, which school you were going to choose. Was there any thought about going to the tournament and, and going to a high major school and, you know, kind of when you went to Vermont, knowing that there was a mid-major and that this might be an obstacle that you might have to overcome? Well, yeah, obviously you think you're going, if you go high major, you got you got a lot bigger chance playing in the tournament, but at the same time, we're all competitors and everybody wants to, everybody wants to get on the court and play. And um, I thought, Going to Vermont, I'd have the best chance of playing a lot, um, which is paid dividends, but also being able to have a chance of making the tournament. I think last year we were a game away, and this year right now we're a game away, and I still got another year under my belt. Who knows what can happen? So I think the it was the right choice being coming here, getting to play a lot, but also having a chance of making the tournament every year that I've been here. Are you guys an older team? Like, do you guys have a lot of seniors, or are you guys considered a younger team? Um, we're we're experienced. We're mostly juniors. Um, we were last year. We were a really young team. Last year we were sophomores and juniors. We only we got three seniors graduating this year, so most most of the team will be back. We're losing a couple, couple big pieces. Um, Dre was defensive player of the year, and Darren um was sixth man of the year. We're losing them, but. Um, we got a lot of the team returning. A lot of a lot of the core is going to be back next year. So, 
if you guys win the championship on Saturday, is that when they do like the net cutting and stuff? Yeah, yeah, we'll do our net our net cutting so, tomorrow or on Saturday. If we win. So, do you get to cut the net? Is that like has that been pre decided? <laughs> Well, each player gets to cut a piece of the net, and then the coach, finish, head coach, finishes it off. I think is how it works. I'm not, not entirely sure, honestly. Have you guys practiced cutting the nets down? Like in the movies, they no. talk about cutting the nets down. Have you practiced that? <laughs> bad luck. I don't know. We we don't talk about winning or making the tournament at all. Honestly, kind of just talk about focusing on the next game and trying to win the next. One. So, a couple more questions. Because uh, we know you're a busy guy and uh, you probably have lots of stuff going on. Um, being going back to being a Canadian, you know, what does it mean to you? You know, did you ever think growing up, you know, in Toronto that you would be able to have such an impact on a now in a team that's nationally recognized in the United States in a sport that is on the rise in Canada but still isn't quite there in that, you know, global recognition for basketball? Uh, what does it mean to you to be a Canadian guy doing the things that you're doing right now at a school that's not necessarily expected to be doing what they're doing right now? Um, it's it's huge. It means it means everything. I mean, you don't. I know I didn't really expect to be where I'm at. Um, I like to say I do, but um, I didn't. I mean, Phil Crothers, uh, I transferred there, going to the 12th grade, and that. That was where the, really the opportunity presented itself. So I can't say that I was really looking at this as a realistic goal throughout high school. But I mean, just um, being able to have an impact is huge. And every day, I'm 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 really grateful for it. I mean, I can't thank family, my coaches, and friends enough for helping me get here. But I mean, just I know, like you said, can't, basketball is not huge in Canada, but it's growing, and I think. If when people see people like me and I have a lot of friends to play as well with making the most of the opportunities and having opportunities that the sport's going to continue to grow and continue to do better. Uh, I'll kind of throw a curveball at you. Uh, just this past week, the OUA championships wrapped up here in Ontario and Ryerson, uh, back-to-back champs. How, guys, how do you think that an American team would maybe stack up against some of these Canadian teams? I'm not sure if you follow it, but... Uh, maybe Vermont, for for argument's sake, how do you guys think you would stack up against, let's say, Ryerson, who just won the OUA championship? Um, no offense to, to Ryerson. <laughs> I'm, I'm never I'm never going against my guys, uh, the guys that I share my locker room with. Um, I don't I know I have a couple friends who play OUA and CIS in general, but I I don't pay too too close attention attention to it, but. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm picking picking my team over any team. Do you still keep in touch with guys that you played with here and at Bill uh, Bill Crothers and stuff uh, who are down there in the uh, states still? Yeah, yeah. Those the guys that I played with are some of my closest friends. I talk to them weekly, probably. So, what's kind of next for you? I know you're probably not looking too far into the future, but uh, once the season's done, what's kind of next for Trey on the basketball and then maybe on the uh, academic side as well? Um, continue to continue to get better. Once the season's over, I got I got one year of eligibility left, so I'm gonna use it. Um, academically, I'm a statistics major. Um, uh, with aspirations of becoming an actuary. Um, but obviously after college and stuff, if I can keep playing basketball, um, pro somewhere, I'd like to do that for as long as I can. But um, definitely still taking school seriously and um, t- taking my major seriously. Now, given the opportunities that you could potentially have after finishing next year, would you have ever thought that you'd be able to go somewhere overseas or whether it be the NBA or the D-League and play basketball professionally? Like, how long have, has that kind of been a realistic goal for you? Was it when you got to Vermont or was it something that you'd always been striving for before you got to uh, school? Um, definitely something that, that you strive for. The reason, the reason I started playing, obviously, was the dream of, dream of playing in the NBA. Um, I still don't know if it's, it, how realistic of a goal it is to, to be playing in the NBA and be playing overseas in general, but um, I'm having a, having a really good year this year and hopefully going to have a follow-up with another good year. So as long as the possibility is there, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and play, um, play for as long as I can because obviously 
I think this will be more fun than sitting at a desk and doing a day job. <laughs> no kidding. Trey, buddy, we're going to let you go. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. All the best to you and, and Vermont, and hopefully you guys uh, pull it out against Albany on Saturday and we can all watch you in the tournament next weekend. All right, thank you. Appreciate it, guys. Best of luck, buddy. <laughs>